starting with the depth of your experience uh, across uh, different economies, what do you see as the enduring solutions for food security? What's your wish list for the future? Okay. Thank you. That, that's indeed a very important question. And as we say, you know, in the community, there's no silver bullet solution, no single solution. Okay, I think we need to look at a complex of solutions. The first of which is food systems. We need to have food systems which include production systems and supply chains, which are sustainable. Okay, and what does this mean? Sustainable food systems are those that don't degrade the environment because they use farming technologies which ensure high productivity but have minimal impact from the inputs okay, with some form of circularity, recycling, for example, yeah, or some of the, uh, the biological elements okay, that can then add and rejuvenate, in fact, the factors of production. Okay. So sustainable farm food systems would be the first one, I would say, which is very important. And there's a lot of concern about this today, about how to sustain these food systems and what new technologies can be used to sustain food systems. The second, really, it's more process uh, as a solution. We need to ensure that science continues to be invested in, especially science that improves any part of the food system. Okay. Very commonly, we talk about agriculture. Okay. There's so much potential still for science to impact on agriculture. And here's where advanced technologies are not just digital technologies. They're also biological technologies. Biotechnology, for example, we're on the cusp of another biotech revolution, okay, based on gene editing, for example, where we can speed up breeding processes, incorporate new traits. Okay? Uh, then apart from digital and biotechnological, there are other things that are involved in, for example, mechanization, uh, mobility, uh, robotics, you know, miniaturization, you know, having sensors you know, that are miniaturized, okay, that can really help us truly improve the precision of our farming to maximize productivity. You see, in agriculture, you know, and in food security circles, we tend to talk about, about what we call the genotype times environment interaction. Okay? Because you can have the best seed or the best breed of animal. If the environment to grow them is not perfect, they're not going to reach their potential. Okay? So we want to use all the tools that we have to optimize and in some cases maximize this G by E interaction, which is now increasingly made possible because of advanced technologies. But technologies are based on science, so we need to invest in science. And unfortunately, again, the developed world invests a lot more in science and, 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 and R&D in agriculture than the developing countries. So we've got to lift up our game, basically, uh, in the ASEAN region especially, to invest more in agriculture. Now, the third aspect in terms of enduring solution is to reduce food loss and waste. The Food and Agriculture Organization has done lots of studies, and generally they show that food loss is higher in developing countries, whereas food waste is higher in the more developed economies. Okay? Food loss includes usually loss at the farm level and along the supply chain. And here's where, you know, low-cost techniques in supply chain management, for example, that can help us reduce that loss okay, or improvements in agricultural practice through good agricultural practices can also help us in, to reduce food loss. Food waste, even in countries like Singapore, you know, different estimates, that, you know, I think the government here has, has, you know, publicly estimated that, you know, we waste almost 800,000 tons of food in Singapore every year. All right. So the question then comes, the sustainable food systems, how do we reduce that food waste? We have to take efforts at the national level, at the technological level, at the social behavior level, at the household level, and so on. And thankfully, there's a lot of interest now in addressing food loss and food waste. There are even predictive algorithms to help uh, big kitchens, like in hotels and so on, actually estimate you know, how much food they really should be preparing in terms of inputs, and then in the process, reduce food waste. And there are also algorithms in place, both technology and software, to help companies reuse their food waste. And one very practical example that I can share is that, you know, one of our biggest, you know, F&B 
outlets is in Marina Bay Sands. If for people who visit Singapore and visit Marina Bay Sands, you can go and see the Eco Garden, okay, which is basically you know grown using bio waste that they biodigest in the bio fertilizer to grow their own vegetables for their own kitchens, and their own kitchens feed about twenty thousand people a day. You know, so there's examples like that which really you know give us a lot of hope that part of the sustainable solution picture addresses food waste and food loss. Now, I think it would also be remiss for me not to mention, you know, as part of this food security uh, picture, you know, nutrition. Okay? It is very important that we see nutrition security as part of food security. Right? It's not just growing in our food, it's growing the right mix of food that become part of our diet and help us to have balanced nutrition. Okay? And this is becoming a more and more critical issue as countries move from developing to develop okay, what we call non-communicable diseases like diabetes for example are becoming more frequent mainly because of lack of awareness about nutrition security okay, that we eat enough food to be food secure by as many calories okay. so nutrition security is something that we need to have somehow integrate into our solutions okay, for long-term sustainability of food systems yeah.